So again, today we're going to try and tap into your real world understanding of things to help you to build the foundations for understanding fractions. A lot of understanding fractions about is, is about getting the idea of there's a whole and that can be broken into parts and how big are those parts compared to the whole? And so that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, so for example, a large part of my day is made making maths videos and a small part of my day is made doing the introduction to the maths videos. Uh, so we're going to have a look. Uh, uh, we're going to have a look at lots of part and whole examples. Again, hopefully you'll come up with lots of your own examples. And if you do, please send them through. Little recap to start from yesterday. So we'll start as so often with a little recap from yesterday. Um, yesterday we had a look at this example. We said four people sharing three pieces of toast. What we could do is share each piece of split each piece of toast up equally into four, and so each person has one of those quarters of each piece. So they'd end up with three quarters in total. Or we said what we could do is share the first two pieces, split them in half. So we each have a half of one of these two pieces. And then that last one into quarters. A half at a quarter. Well, that's three quarters. And then we moved on to these big ideas of fractions. The idea that a quarter is actually more than a sixth, even though four is less than six. Because here I'm splitting one into four pieces. One pizza shared between four people. And that means we have more each than one pizza shared between six people, because each piece then is smaller. And we also saw that a quarter and two eighths is actually the same. A quarter and two eighths are equivalent, we say. Um, and that's because when I have two pizzas shared between eight people, I will need to cut each one up into four pieces, so there were eight pieces in total. And that is actually the same amount each, um, two pizzas shared between eight people, because we'd all have one quarter as one pizza shared between four people. Now, have a look at these ones, see if we can extend that thinking. Odd one out. So which question is the odd one out? Four children share eight chocolate bars, how much each? Or three chocolate bars shared between six children, how much each? Or is this one the odd one out? Four chocolate bars shared by eight children, how much each? Pause the video, see if you can spot the odd one out. Again, I've tried to put a little picture to this so, so we can see. Well, let's have a look at four children share eight chocolate bars. There they are, the four children. Um, aren't they queuing sensibly there? And there are the eight chocolate bars. So how much do they have? They have two chocolate bars each. Oh, lucky. Well, let's have a look at this one. Three chocolate bars shared by six children. Well, there's six children. There's three chocolate bars. So how much will they have each? They would have half a chocolate bar each. And what about the last one? Four chocolate bars shared by eight children, how much each? Well, let's have a look. There's the eight children, there's the four chocolate bars. Again, they would have half each. So the odd one out is this one, this example on the left here. So today's video is called Comparing Parts. We're gonna think really deeply about different parts of different holes, and you'll have to estimate how big is this part compared to that one. And this is gonna really lay the foundation for you to do really, really well with fractions. Um, and so in later videos, we'll do more actually writing fractions, but today we're really gonna understand what they're built from. Let's have a think about parts and holes. So for example, England as a part, well, England is a part of the United Kingdom. And can you see England there? It's quite a large part of the United Kingdom. And the United Kingdom is the whole. But I could think of England as the whole, and I could find a part of England. So for example, Cheshire is a part of England. England in that example is the whole. Well, let's have a think about a tree. So if I'm describing a tree as part of something bigger, I could say a tree is a part of a forest. Um, but maybe I could also think of a tree as the, the whole, the whole thing. And so I could say, for example, the trunk is a part of a tree. And that means that the tree is a whole. Now, it's your turn to think of some examples. So have a think about these contexts. A hand, a classroom, a banana, a cardigan. Come up with as many sentences as you can to describe these things as a part and as a whole. So, for example, could you think of a banana you could say, what, what is part of a banana? But a banana is part of what as well? Uh, I wonder how many different examples you can come up with. Uh, pause the video and have a go. And then when you're ready, let's play again. Um, so for example, I could say a hand is part of an arm and a finger is part of a hand. Um, the classroom is part of a school. And let's say the table's part of the classroom. Um, a banana, well, the skin is part of a banana, 
Maybe a banana might be part of a fruit salad. And what about a cardigan? Well, part of a cardigan is the buttons. So that's quite a small part. And a cardigan is part of your school uniform. They're just examples. You, of course, you might have come up with others. Let's have a think about this pencil. And this time, I'm going to think not only about the parts of a pencil, but which ones are the small parts and which ones are the bigger parts. So I could say that the, that let's say the rubber, is quite a small part of a pencil. It's just this little end bit here. Um, but a large part of a pencil could be the wood. I would say that's probably most of the pencil, probably more than half of it. Have a think about these examples then, for examples of a small part and a big part. So the fraction of your school lunch time that you would spend, say, eating or outside or playing or lining up. So which then would you say are the smaller parts, uh, which are the larger parts? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, let's have a look. Well, I hope that the smallest part of your lunchtime is lining up, that that doesn't take too long. Although, of course, that would could vary a little bit. Now, maybe it could be occasionally you have a lunchtime where it's all outside and that's the whole time. But I would imagine that you generally are eating inside and that's a slightly smaller part and more of your time is outside. And playing, again, hopefully playing might be all the time you're outside or a lot of your lunchtime. But I wonder for you, which is the biggest of those parts. And again, I hope that lining up was the smallest one. Well, which is bigger? I wonder what this is for you. Your school kitchen. So in your school, how big the kitchen is or your kitchen at home. I wonder which one is bigger. Now, my guess is the school kitchen is bigger than your kitchen. I think that's generally the case. School kitchens are generally fairly big, than, bigger than most home kitchens. So this picture represents the school kitchen. This one represents your kitchen. But let's say this, which is bigger? The fraction of the school that is the kitchen or the fraction of your house that is the kitchen? Now, again, it might vary a little bit depending on your school and your house uh, or where you live. But generally speaking, the um, the kitchen is a small fraction of the school. So the kitchen, let's say it's this big. Well, the school might be much bigger relative to the kitchen. And so you could fit lots of a box this size in the hole. Whereas the fraction of a house that is the kitchen, well, that is, even though the kitchen is smaller, it's usually a larger fraction. So the fraction that is larger is the fraction of your house that is the kitchen. It tends to be larger than the fraction of the school that is the kitchen even though the kitchen in the school is probably larger than the kitchen in most houses. Okay, well, have a think about these examples. The fraction of one day that you were asleep, the fraction of the year that is spring, the season of spring, and the fraction of a maths video that Gareth is talking. Um, order these fractions from smallest to largest. What do you think? Pause the video and have a go. Okay, I'm going to show you some pictures that represent this and we can't represent it perfectly and it'll be different for different people for some of them. But let's say the fraction of one day that you were asleep, it might be, let's say here you're asleep for 10 hours and you're awake for 14 hours. Um, and so there, that, that's a, it's not as much as half, but it's quite a large fraction. The fraction of a year that is spring is slightly less than that. It will be a quarter of the year if we split our year evenly into four seasons then the fraction of the year that is spring will be a quarter, so that'll be slightly less. And what about the fraction of a maths video that Gareth is talking? Well, I seem to be talking for most of a maths video, apart from these little bits where the video's paused, certainly more than half. Um, so there, I would say that the largest fraction is the fraction of a maths video that I'm talking. And then I'd say it's the fraction of one day that you're asleep. And then it's the fraction of a year that is spring. Now, the funny thing there is that in a maths video, this is the shortest amount of time uh, of all the examples, which is the amount of time in a maths video that I'm talking, that'll be a few minutes. Um, the fraction of one day that you were asleep, I'd measure that in hours, that'll be the next most. And actually the longest period of time is the fraction of a year that is spring. This is a whole season, about three months. But of course, when we're talking about fractions, we've got to think how big is the whole that we're comparing them to. So today's task can be found by clicking on that blue link underneath the video and it'll bring up, we've got a task A and a task B. So for, so for task A, um, see if you can fill in a word for each of these gaps. So for example, the class is part of the, what could that missing word be? The something is part of the zoo. What could those words be? 
For part B, you're going to make up your own part whole sentences about one of these things. A wheel, a leg and a bedroom. Now, can you use each one as the part and also as the whole? Um, so then part C is which is the biggest fraction? So look at those animal examples and which of those examples is the largest fraction, the part that has been pointed to? Uh, task B, there's a slightly different example on the top because you've got to use each of these words to fill the gap, but you've got to use each one twice. Um, for part B, um, you, we're doing a similar thing. So thinking of your own part and whole sentences about one of these things. So for example, a wheel, a leg and a bedroom. But can you think of sentences where you can have a wheel as a large part and a wheel as a small part or a small part of a wheel is or a large part of a wheel is? Come up with as many different sentences as you can with small and large parts. And for task for part C, um, you've got to order all of these things from smallest to largest in terms of them as fractions. Uh, the answers are at the bottom uh, or what I think the answers are at the bottom. You might have a slightly different view because we are estimating here um, and we're going to build on this even further tomorrow. I hope you've really enjoyed it.